everybody. Welcome to this episode of Bravo Confessionals. We are here with the fabulous Jenna McGilvray. Gilvray? Oh, yeah. <laughs> of Glow yeah. first episode of first season of Glow Deck Sailing Yacht. So we have some questions for her. We're going to dig a little deep, deep, go and spill some tea. But welcome. We are very happy to have you on the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> and then we have Mel and Taylor and I'm Michelle. So we're going to kick this off with a little bit of a Fesser Deny because you are okay. on Bravo Confessionals. Yeah. So, that's your guy. How you talked to Captain Glenn. Would you do it differently or would you be all right? Yeah. To be honest, on, on that particular day, uh, my frustrations were coming from another place. And I can't really go into that, but my frustrations weren't aimed at him. I was a little bit frustrated that it was, you know, we were going into the final um, charter. And so I felt like it was such a small, minute thing. And at the time, uh, I felt as though Madison had been like aiming to get me in some way. And although she said, no, I don't want any involvement in it. You know, she had gone to numerous uh, crew members to express her feelings towards me. And I think that was kind of where my frustrations came from was like being ratted on instead of, you know, and and to me, the guests didn't go without anything. Uh, We're all entitled to breaks. The other thing that's part of it is that, and I think people don't understand necessarily, is that when you're working on a yacht, you have hours of rest. So within any 24 hour period, this is kind of boring, but within any 24 hour period of time, you have to have an amount of hours of rest and the minimum is eight hours. So we're working like 16, 17 hour days. You're also having to take a break in the day. And so that's my job to manage those breaks. So when there's three girls and you each have to take a two hour break throughout the day, there's going to be some overlap. So that's all it was. It, it wasn't about me like sloughing off my responsibilities to go have a nap with Adam. That was never the situation. So that's why I was frustrated. I think it was taken out of context rather than understanding what really happened. It wasn't me being like, oh, screw my job. I'm going to go sleep with Adam. That wasn't the case at all. It was like, hey, I have a break. You have a break. Let's have a little nap together. And I mean, it's no different than Madison and Georgia taking a break at the same time and sleeping in the same cabin. It just, um, you know, one stewardess can handle drink service for one hour for the guests and I think that that's why I was frustrated was because it was blamed on me and the other thing is we're a team and it just it felt like at that point it wasn't like it was it was all coming on me and I know that I'm the leader but I didn't feel like I did anything wrong so I was frustrated I would uh I do get heated I get um very reactive so my tone would have changed I would have definitely changed my tone I just would have wanted to have like a better conversation with him that I know I'm capable of. So I was disappointed in myself that I didn't um, clearly state how I was feeling in a more rational way. Okay. Um, Do you feel how you treated Madison and Georgia? Do you feel like there was a difference? There definitely was a difference. And the difference came from Georgia's behavior toward me and Madison's behavior towards me. It's much easier to be, um, you know, wanting to be around somebody that seemingly wants to be around you, opposed to somebody who is constantly backstabbing you. And and that happened the whole season. Madison was, you know, like really, uh, I would say aggressive about Adam and I's relationship. She was constantly talking about it. She was constantly rolling her eyes. And it didn't feel like there was much respect there from the beginning. And I know people would say, well, you didn't respect her. Like, which came first? I don't know. But I think that her and I just have a different way of working. And we had friction to begin with. And it was not her fault. I don't think it's necessarily my fault. I think just two people that probably shouldn't work together or should have had better communication from the beginning. And so that's something that I would do differently next time as well. That's admirable. Um, you regret confess or deny ever dating him? Do I regret dating him? Um, I regret um, having a relationship on the show. Okay. Yeah. Because it created a lot of extra stress for me and it wasn't pleasant at times. So uh, had we met in the real world, that would have been awesome. But I also can't deny the feelings I had for him, the attraction. And I felt like I'm not going to deny myself that. It comes across, um, you know, rarely as we all know that you have a genuine connection with somebody and that's what it was. And so, yeah, I would say when re- I don't regret it. it. It is what it is. I just wish we would have met in real life as a 
opposed to on a boat on a season. Yeah. Do you yeah. talk? Do you talk to him anymore? <laughs> yep. We still talk. Yeah. I just didn't know if it, you know. It's like breakups are weird. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I especially. Mean, <clears throat> especially at the end of like a, a show. But so we didn't break up at the end of the show. Um, we actually stayed together <laughs> until March of this year. And, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, there was a lot of complexities involved with that and a lot of emotion and a lot of, you know, sadness and good times. And, um, we still have respect for each other for the most part, but it was just the show killed us and yeah. it sucks. It sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, That's I okay. I will never, I will never root on heartache. Yeah. Never. Yeah, it, I mean, it sucks, especially. I have a lot of you know, bad relationships as highlighted and uh you know I just I'm definitely at the point where I'm like pretty uh non <laughs> I, I just feel like I never want to have another relationship again I'm just like I've Done. been be beaten down too many times not in, literally but um d it just never seems to work out and I'm trying to work on myself and figure out where I go wrong in relationships and I think a huge thing is that I, I'm transient so I'm never in one place at one time so it's always like like all or nothing and it's super intense and that makes it really hard and there's just a lot at play there and if I was in one place content working a job in the city probably would be easier for me to maintain a relationship but because I'm always moving around it makes it very challenging and I'm a strong willed person and I call people on their shit and a lot of men don't like that <laughs> <laughs> we're <laughs> like friends. actually those two me i'm like they're like taylor speak up i'm like i can't yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. like friends there and and we're we're all married to men that, that just bless their heart because <laughs> well you need a really strong man and a man who's also like i want somebody to call me on my shit too but when yeah. it's deserved right so yeah. and and vice versa i don't I don't want to be in a conflictual relationship. I like to have like ease. I like to just be easy and have fun. Um, but sometimes when a man doesn't step up to the plate and obviously that's just been, I've just been in the wrong situations and I need to find a strong to keep me in line and keep me interested. And you know, they're out there. Alive. They're out there. Where the <laughs> fuck are they? <laughs> We're on the hunt. They're we'll not in hunt. my house. We'll <laughs> <find them>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so going back into this confessor tonight, would you affect showing so much affection towards Adam while on service? So that was that's another thing. It shows a lot of that. I'm an, I'm not a PDA person at all. Like I'm really not. The times that I showed PDA, um, I would wake up in the morning and I'd be really excited to see him, and I would go in, and this was before like cameras were around, and I would go in and give him a hug, and that would be like the extent of it. And the odd time he would come over to me and like slap me on the butt or do whatever. And sometimes we did it as a joke, but the times that we were do we were PDA style, like keep in mind, and people aren't, aren't aware of this. Like I would finish so my shift finishes when the guests are done dinner and then the late girl who is Madison continues on so our only space is where you see us in the crew mess that's like our living room right we live there so we're not going to go into each other's cabins then you're like in other people's turf so we were just sitting there and it would be like the odd time that they catch us but it wasn't like, it was the camera catching us. It wasn't the crew always seeing us. I, I'm not like that. I don't do that. So really and truly, I, I wasn't like humping him in front of people all the time. The cameraman, yeah. But they sign up for that. So all right. That was your, yeah, we were talking to Colin the other day. We were talking yeah. to Colin the other day from Met, Blow Deck Met. <laughs> yeah, you know Colin. But he said that you guys hung out in the city a little bit we ago. Did. Yeah. <laughs> but we were talking awesome. to him and he was explaining to us that like, yeah, they have like a day shift camera crew and a yeah. night shift camera crew and you just yeah. don't get it in any you don't, personal you're not place. talking to them there's also cameras in the ceiling so a lot of the footage that you see when Adam and I are engaged in PDA no one is actually there and it looks like the camera angle looks like they're people are seeing us they're not like it was like sneaking little kisses here and there and you never once saw me with my tongue in his throat I never made out with him like that I never touched his like nope. penis in public. Never you did can say penis. penis. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Pe yeah, I can't, I can't touch the dick. But it was like, you no, know, honestly, it was like affection, and it's like to me. And that was when I had that conversation with Glenn. It was like I don't want to work in an environment where. I can't show affection. And that doesn't mean like I need to be dry humping somebody at work. That's not my point at all. We live where we work. So 
nobody had an issue with it except for Madison until finally it was like, oh wait, it's an issue on our very last charter. So it was like, Glenn never had an issue. He had never spoke to us about it. Um, and he said, he said, unless it's impacting your work. And it was like this one little blip. And I think it's such a small little blip. Again, that's why it was like, come on guys. This is like, it, it felt unfair to be chastised for that when no one else ever said anything about our PDA. Okay. Um, do you regret at that point telling Adam you loved him? Uh, listen, <laughs> as all of my boyfriends and non-boyfriends will, will tell you, if I drink champagne, I will f***ing tell a rat in a hole that I love them. So, <laughs> if Adam, like Adam, like a lot of viewers are very literal, like I will literally tell anyone I love them. And I'm shocked at the amount of times that guys are like, I love you too. And then I'm like, no way, that was but champagne. Like, yeah, was or like I tell my girlfriends I love them. Well, no, it's more so like I, to be honest, the way that I mean that is like, I, I tell a lot of people I love them because I'm telling people like, I love you. Like I'm like, I'm just passionate and I'm, exp You're I'm not hugging. I'm not in love with you, but I'm just like, I have feelings and I don't know it's, how else to describe it. You know, like, it's, it's okay to love someone. And like you said, not being in love, but yeah. it's okay to feel affection and love people in a short amount of time because yeah. You're also super confined and these are just your people for, you know, this amount of time. Yeah. But it's so it's totally natural. I'm the same way. I'm just not allowed to drink champagne since the time in high school when I right. made mimosas and I forgot the orange juice. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean I just drink champagne, but I still do. But it's the same as like I mean it's the same as Georgia and Madison being like, I love you. Like we all say that shit. And it's yep. you know, I said it to a dude and it was in a situation that was a weird awkward situation but was I in love with him at that point no did I love him as a person yes like yep do, do I have a lot of feelings I have love for everyone I will tell you know my mailman I love them like it's just until I tell you like I am fucking in love with you you will know if I'm in love with you but if I just say I feel like I love you especially on you're, champagne, I'm not you're just saying you. you're just saying I don't hate you yeah that's right it's chill <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> the crush, like puppy love. Yeah. Uh, again, with the confessors and eyes, would you regret sleeping in the master cabin? The master so, suite. That was a whole other thing. So part of that was that it was very difficult for me to have genuine feelings for somebody and be filmed. And I asked for some space where Adam and I could get to know each other, a place that was uh not going to be heard by anyone where I could get to know him on a personal level. Otherwise I didn't want to want to move forward with the relationship. So that was the place that was available. And, uh, you know, it wasn't out of disrespect for anyone. Um, as we all know, the, the boat gets chartered hundreds of times, hundreds of people have slept in that bed. Um, we always brought our own blankets down there. Um, I didn't, I, you know, I certainly didn't want to upset any of the crew. The crew knew what was going on. There was even an episode where, um, Pat and Tara were like, yeah, and, and Byron were like, go, go to the master, go wherever you want to go. Just go get laid, you know? And of and, course, they know that. Pardon me? And of course, they don't show that. No, they did show it. They said that. It was the episode that we had the day off, and we all were having dinner, and Parker gives the speech about his parents. So, and then we were like, oh, so you're giving us your blessing. And they were like, yeah, go for it. So that happened. And, um, you know, we didn't speak Glenn about it, but Glenn was also like, didn't really care. Um, you know, what's the difference of crew members having sex in it? I mean, we've all seen it on other below decks. Yeah, yeah, I was I was going to say we've we've seen that done. I mean, it's kind of um, it's not new, and it's yeah. just a private space. And it's like, what's better, having sex in a hot tub where all of your fluids are going everywhere, or like on you know the on the top deck where the bunny pad is, where you're not putting anything down, you're having sex on that. Like that's happened. Both good places, but yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean, but again, both of us didn't want to be on camera. Like I, neither one of us were ever going to like actually, and that's how serious I am about PDA in my personal life. I never wanted to be on camera having sex. I never wanted any part of that. And neither did Adam. So it was like, 
that was the space that was offered and we took that so that we could get to know each other on a more personal level and our relationship could grow yeah um, so i know you kind of touched base on this and this is my last question for you and then i'm going to turn it over to taylor um but for putting madison would you confess or deny putting madison on service solo for such a worthy guest um i mean th there's no confess or deny there it's uh she she we we still have to take breaks so it had to happen and for one hour to, they were in the water too it for one hour she can do cocktail service for one hour that's if somebody can't do that then they shouldn't be working on gotcha, it so. gotcha. yeah all right taylor okay so we're gonna do like a yay or nay so you just say yay for yes or nay for no you probably okay. knew what that meant yeah <laughs> i picked up what you were putting down <laughs> She's All quick, right. this one. She's quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you believe Madison and Adam Spat fogged your view of her? Nay. Okay. Did you ever get signs that your relationship with Adam was unhealthy? Yay. <laughs> do you believe your true self was shown on the show? Well, can I say 50-50? Yeah. Absolutely. You yeah, can that was even my say last one, so you can even... <laughs> Keep going. You you could even say fifty one fifty. Yeah, I would say like I mean I'm pretty, I'm pretty true to myself, but I am not this like cold hearted bitch. I I never take pleasure out of punishing people. A lot of it, I think my humor didn't come off, and uh, that's unfortunate because that's how I live my whole life. Um, I think you can tell in like five minutes of talking to me that. I'm a jokester, so I, um, yeah, so I think that, I think that, um, the people that get me, and I have a lot of fans that really do get me and know that I'm a real person, and I will say it like it is, and then I have people who think that that's really harsh and cruel, and one thing I would say that I have learned about myself is that I definitely am a direct person, and I, and I've realized that not everyone can react or or takes that in the way that i mean it so i think i need to alter myself in terms of workplace behavior of how i communicate with people um on different levels well i have to i have to tell you i think me and mel are both very much <laughs> similar to you where yes. had co-workers be like oh my god you're just and i was like i didn't mean it mean i just yeah, literally yeah trying to get my point across like i was like all right yeah. well, you have to do this but everybody calls it M michelle talking jersey but it's like <laughs> i'm not talking jersey i'm just literally i don't call it like i call it like i see it yeah i just like, um i just don't like the gray i'm not really big on gray i'm either black or white i'm kind of like just be just be on it or just give it up and tell me that you're giving it up i'm just yeah and same goes for relationships and i think that's where that strong woman comes in it's like just fucking tell me. I need to know the answer, and I'll be fine with whatever it is. But the flightiness or the talking behind people's backs and doing all this shit is like, just fucking tell me, you know? And it kind of, and it kind of sets the tone. Oh, yeah. And I, how, yeah. That. I also feel a part of me, it's like almost like a blessing that you're yeah. such a great shooter, but it's also a curse. It like, is, for sure. So. <laughs> It, it, it's good. It's good to see yourself on TV because if there's a season two and if I'm on it, I will definitely take into account that not everyone communicates the way that I do. And uh, you know, I'm also I'm a social worker, but I worked I worked in an environment for the government where it was very like bing bing bing, and you're so I'm used to like every job I've held is very like, and you're also like, you know, when, when you're working for owners of yachts, you're working for CEOs, you're working for high powered individuals, they don't want fluffy shit. They want, this is what's happening. This is what's going down. You're, you're not like, oh, and then, then. you're that's straight. Like they want it straight. So I'm so used to those environments that it's like, it's hard to see something other than that, but I understand and appreciate that not everyone responds to that. Which is interesting. You're a social worker. Yeah, which is extremely interesting. So that, okay, that speaks a lot more to me. I have friends that are social workers and the amount of shit they actually see on a day-to-day -day basis that they have to bring home and they try and turn it off. That yeah. actually, to me, I'm, I'm sorry, you just you just raised yourself up so many levels to me. Because well, I don't, I don't even like to say that I'm a social worker because of the attack that like, oh, how can she be a social worker when she's so shit? And it's like, 
you know, I, I, de I dedicated my education and my career for six years to working with children and families. And I did see a fucking shit ton of stuff that's awful and harrowing. But it's also, you get, you do, you get a bit hardened and it is like, you know, you're not playing games. And so it's like, I, I guess that comes across in my life as well. And it's like, I don't play games. I, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing now. And this is why it has to be this way. And it's yeah, true. I guess I'm it's hardened true. a little bit. Life is harder than me. All these rats that I've told I love them in the gutter have we, um... bitten me and given me a disease that I can't come back from. <laughs> we call it we call it becoming calloused so i tell yeah. the girls i'm like when i being from california we are kind of flowy <clears throat> yeah. but then when i moved here um there's many different it's like you have to compartmentalize the amount of or the areas in which you need to become more callous right and one of those is just the tone of the person talking to you you have to kind of alter it so I have watched Below Deck for years now, and I don't see much difference. So I don't, I don't necessarily understand the intensity and the amount of um, criticism you're receiving. Just considering, I've been watching this forever, and if you're a novice to the show, perhaps that would explain, you know, why you're so furious at Jenna. But I look at it and I'm like, dude, we've done this with Hannah. We did this yeah. with Kate. I mean, yeah. I love, I love Kate. Is that they Kate, were not in a relationship with the chef. Right. So yeah. It as like, well, they, their relationship tainted the whole season. Right? I, I want to sometimes comment on things that I see. And I want to say, how about Kate with Carol Bedell? How about what we saw go down then? And it's like, Jen is just not fluffing conversation. I, ne I never once called anyone a name. I never, like, to me, it was like, you know, when to hear Madison saying, she just speaks to me so demoralizing. And it was like, God, that was never my intent. It was just like, hey, you got to go. And then it was like eye rolling. And then I was like, hey, you got to go. And it was never me being like, hey, bitch, can get moving. Like, I never once called anyone any names. I, I actually, like, the moment about Georgia and me laughing it wasn't me being like ha i made that bitch laugh that was never the case it was more like i just made her laugh like or sorry i made her cry and i laughed like uh, i just i was in shock and i tried to comfort her and then she was like pushing back and so it was like it was a learning process right you're you're all coming together and you have different personalities and it is like i just don't think that i like this word bully just like took off like crazy and it was like I mean, I want to know the examples of the bullying. And when people say, oh, you said that you wanted to punish Madison, that was a straight joke. I would never punish Madison. Like, it was like, you see me laughing, like, oh, I guess I shall have to be punished. Like, that's a complete joke. It's like, you know, again, it's just, we had our issues, but I never, you know, I don't think I was a bully and we've had conversations after and look at my little dog oh my god <laughs> name her name coco am i coco! I, saw, I saw her she was on go the beach coco. was she on the beach this morning she she yeah. was somewhere getting wet this morning yeah <laughs> oh my god she's very <laughs> you're gonna How old is she? <laughs> um she's actually eight Aww. and i actually got her from a lady so this lady who I was doing some social work for, um, I went there and she was like, I don't want this fucking dog. Do you want to take her? And I was like, uh, I guess so. And then she just threw her at me and I took this dog and took her home. And that was I have one, years I have one by a very, very Pokes similar. has a heart. See? Yeah. <laughs> I have a dog who has a very similar story. Just someone kind of saying, can you take this? I don't need it anymore. And it's like, this is terrifying that people are like this. Well, and she's the cutest little dog. Like, she's so affectionate. She, like, loves everything I do. And she's just, like, the coolest dog. That's awesome. I, I love her. I like love, love you, on You go, Coco. <laughs> Too for you, Glenn Coco. You go, Coco. <laughs> My boyfriend in high school's last name was Coco, and that's just what everybody called oh, him. Oh, really? It was Coco. So I was like, two for me, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Awesome. I have uh, just a couple of questions just to kind of wrap up. Um, it's still the confirm or deny <clears throat> sort of um, setting. So do you see now that Madison did not, or what is your feeling now about seeing that Madison did not directly say, but I think we kind of covered this earlier, um, just yeah. considering she didn't say it directly in that moment, but she has said things. Yeah, Which I think, accumulate. Yeah, I think it accumulated. And I think that Tiara would not have done that on her own. I think she was uh feeling frustrated as well. And I can't I don't want to speak for other people. So I, I just I don't know what happened between them and I don't know how it transpired. So I would just say I don't really know what happened with that conversation. I see what I see on the show, but I don't really know the full extent of it. So I just no comment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving along into same topic. Uh, did you address it with Sierra uh, when you saw that she was the one to tell Gwen? I did after the fact, yes. And she, she, she apologized and she said she was repeating what Madison had Said. Okay. Um, th and that's kind of a tough spot for Sierra to be put in as well. So I yeah, yeah. uh, kind of think of that. Um, did you know the master uh, bedroom spat was being reported? No. No, probably not. And Colin was telling us about that. He was like, you know, when we saw um, during his last season when June was, you know, kind of having a breakdown and trying to get away from cameras and stuff and, yeah. you know, taking off her um, her little recorder and trying to do something and, and there's just no way to get away from it. So, yeah, we didn't, we didn't know. So it was uh, uncomfortable to say the least to have people listening to me having sex. So, yeah. Did you hear, did you like get this? Like, the first time you actually saw that they had your entire conversation recorded, was it when the show premiered? Or did uh, they, like... We found out about it um, while we were still filming. They let us know. And then once the show came out, like, that was... I mean, they're, they're, they edited it as it goes along, so we didn't know when it would be out. And watching it was, like, ah! Uh, yeah, no, no. It's what Crazy. you signed up for, so... I feel like I have to wear earmuffs when I'm, like, having sex with my husband so I don't hear myself I can't imagine <laughs> seeing yeah. it on television well I don't think I I don't think there was any like much audio of me so you know it wasn't it wasn't even like the whole sex part it was yeah. literally after yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah I can't I cannot take Taylor anywhere I swear to god <laughs> sorry I'm like That's mostly awesome. quiet and then I speak <laughs> And then you're like, I can't listen to myself have sex. I gotta have headphones on. I'm like, Taylor, Taylor your what do you do? Do you meow like a cat or what's happening, Taylor? Oh, that would be perfect. <laughs> She's like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> your husband's like, Taylor, please put the earmuffs on. Me. No, no, he wears them too. Oh, oh God. God. Oh, well, thank God. God. That's why you're still married. Because otherwise, I'm I'm literally <laughs> picture like I cannot get this out of my head. Thank you, Taylor. You're welcome. It's almost it's almost like the time you woke up in a snow angel and you were going to the Dominican Republic by yourself twice. <laughs> Fine. It's a lot, Groupon. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Moving on. Oh, hey. How <laughs> <laughs> how is it to um how is it to balance uh love and work on a boat in small quarters? Oh super easy. <laughs> totally. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean like I was engaged before and I was uh with a guy for three years. We worked on three different boats together and it was not without um some conflict, but overall we kept it really private and like vowed never to fight on the boat. We would always leave the boat if we were gonna have a fight. Um, never bring personal issues into the crew. It's just not fair to anyone else. Um, but we also shared a cabin, so it's like, you know, you have your own private space. But even in the cabin, it was like we never engaged in arguments. We were always respectful of people. So again, it was different circumstances in this scenario, but I've never had an issue with it before because I'm respectful of other people and know that it isn't just your space, it's everyone's space. So yeah. So I, I have a question. <laughs> what if, so if, so you and Adam were linked up. If you guys would have approached somebody and said, like, I mean, like, one of your fellow cast crew members to be like, hey, you want to swap rooms, like, at summer camp? Like, if you didn't like the girl you got um, bumped with, you would just swap? It actually swap? came 
it actually came up. Parker wanted to switch cabins and sit, be in the girls' cabin, and Adam didn't want that. I, I, I thought of that mid-season, and then I was like, I bet you anything Adam is like, no, I don't want to immediately like yeah. think up not only that but a girl doesn't want to deal with shit stains you know what i mean that's right <laughs> in the toilet i don't want to know his personal habits yet so <laughs> no no yeah. okay last question or uh one of we're, we're down to two and this one is kind of a, a trippy one by the way i live on a military base and i just saw that this kona ice truck is driving through and I don't get it. Everybody loses their shit over it, and I don't get it. I just almost oh, did. I was like, it's shaved ice with syrup. Oh, yeah. That's it's just, Italian ice. Yeah. It's, it's like just Rita's, like, Michelle. Just eat sugar. I Sorry. just don't get it. I don't, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm I don't participate. Enough. Moving on. Sorry, it just drove by, and I was like, you, um, anyway, so what, what do you do about, and I, this is, this is based on stuff that I've seen online that really has me as someone who, who experiences mental health issues and is very serious about uh, my depression and my anxiety. Um, I have an open account. I also have a private account just to kind of monitor what space I'm in on a particular day. So this is based on stuff that I'm seeing set, uh, said to you. So, yeah. what do you do, or what do you think about comments calling you narcissistic and things of of that sort? Well, I know that it's completely wrong, but at the same, like, if you knew me, you'd know. Give a shit what people think about me, and I'm human, and I think we all do. I have, like, I don't even. It's like the advice i've gotten is like never let the trolls know that it bothers you well i'm sorry but i'm human and it does bother me and i cry about it and it hurts my feelings and i've had some really low moments as a result of it because it's not who i am and it's like this feeling of like i get defensive because it's like i want them to know who i really am but it's like i can't i can't I'm never gonna convince those people they have their minds made up and it's just yeah it's been like an eye-opening experience for me it's hurtful for me to have my family read these things and i'm gonna cry just thinking of that I cry oh God, stop. no but it just it sucks it's like because people who know me know that it's so far from the truth and so to read those things is like I don't, it, you go through a mix of emotions because i'm like I want to prove them wrong but at the same time it's like why even put energy into something that's a wasteful cause and I, and I know that those people that are saying those things it's coming from hatred towards themselves but it's like it still hurts me um I'm a narcissist like that I you know I care about myself I'm very confident for the most part I also have insecurities just like everyone else and I do my best to deal with them. And I think sometimes confidence can come across to people who aren't confident as being cocky or being arrogant or thinking I'm the shit. I don't think any of those things. I'm very comfortable with who I am as a person because I've done so much work on myself. Um, and I'm, you know, and I have developed wonderful relationships with friends, with family. And so I know that I am a good person. It just, uh, yeah, it gets it gets overwhelming to read and hear. Sometimes it's funny, but honestly, sometimes it's kind of funny. But it's like, and for me, it's more so, it's not even about me, and this has been my thing all along. It's that, like, my friend's kids who are, like, 8, 9, 10, 11, read that shit. And it's like, do we want our kids to be reading shit like that? Somebody told me that it looked like I had a stroke and I need to learn how to talk it on the other side of my mouth. And I commented on this because it's like, how are you f***ing okay with commenting on disabilities or anything about anyone's appearance in general? It's like, it's just, and a lot of people, it just, it's just hateful and it's not a world that I like to be part of. I don't want to give energy or attention to it so it is a balance of you know i have met so many wonderful people online i've had so many wonderful conversations with people i've had conversations with people who are 
you know, suffering from depression, loneliness, everything like that. And I can talk to those people all day because they're wonderful people. And those are the people that I want to give my energy to. So it's like some people have been like, why not just shut off your social media? And it's like, because then I lose the good parts of it. So there are good parts. It's just, I hope that if anything, people see that, you know, name calling, commenting on my appearance or anyone's appearance in general is hateful and it should have no place in our world. It's, it's a waste of energy and I do my best to not give it an ounce of my energy. I obviously do, but I try my best not to because it would shatter me. It's so, just awful because like you're getting like you're getting called a bully online. Yeah. Like we see it. You're getting called a bully. <laughs> but then all these people that are calling you a bully, yeah. they need to hold are. up a mirror to themselves yeah. because they're they're bullying a quote unquote bully. Yeah. They're bullying somebody that they see on TV. That's yeah. it's directly affecting you though. Yeah, it's. But I, I don't. I, but I, will I don't get. Remain, I will always remain strong. I will always advocate. I am not <laughs> going down. I pick myself up every day, and you know that's part of being a strong person is wearing this, you know, invisible shield and having it deflect. And sometimes it's going to get through. And you know, my friends have all heard me cry about it. And until you've gone through it, you don't know how much it can hurt. But it's like, it just, you know, I've gotten almost used to it. I'm acclimatized to it in a way. And I, I don't engage in that. I don't, I, I will never say back to somebody like, F you, you bitch. I don't do that because that wouldn't make me feel good. And it's, I'm not going to play that game. I never will. I've tried to say, hey, this is really not appropriate. And then sometimes that incites them more. So the best thing for me to do is just to ignore as much as possible. Well, we all I, um, know <clears throat> online and they all have something to say about somebody like oh, yeah. this, rip my own earring out, but <laughs> they <laughs> going to say something about somebody. So yeah. I actually, I feel like I owe you an apology because I did do a little bit of a imitation, if you will, of you. But what was it? <laughs> Why don't I remember but this? I think... And that's the thing, right? Once you know somebody, I, I would guarantee without being narcissistic, without being cocky, that each and every one of you are like, that is pretty cool. And, you know, once you know somebody on a real level, and that's all it is, is like, we all should not be so quick to pass judgment and get to know a person. I know it's easy to, to mock somebody or make fun of somebody, but it is, uh, you know, you get to know somebody and they have a lot of value. And that's the only thing that I would say is that the people who have reached out to me and who are kind hearted, I've reached back to, and we've added value to each other's lives. I feel, and I, I know because I've told them that and they've told me that. And so the people who don't want to engage that way and want to engage negatively don't get anything positive in return. So that's their loss. And agreed. And I, I genuinely feel like I do owe you an apology because Thank now you. that I know you as a person, I actually feel like I'm talking to myself. Like if yeah. I was a TV show and I, all of my habits were to be portrayed to millions right. of people, right. I get the exact same negative feedback that you're getting. So yeah. I, I, I appreciate you being real and I appreciate you being a straight shooter and I would probably be the exact same person. So yeah. I, I apologize to you and you well, have thank my- thank you, I appreciate it. I accept <laughs> your apology. <laughs> thank you. Received. I, um, I also talk out of one side of my mouth and I was teased for it quite often when I was growing up. And then yeah. even now when I watch these back, all I do is look at, you know, just one side of my mouth talking, <clears throat> but I'm always saying really cool all. stuff. Because I don't wipe the smile off, but, it, but it's it's something that like when I watch it back and I just think to myself, well, at least I'm saying cool shit, man. So whatever. Exactly. And like, I mean, we're so hard on ourselves just independently. It's like, we don't need to do that to ourselves. We're all going to be old and ugly one day. And, 
the only thing that we take with us, <laughs> or we're old enough right now, who knows? But <laughs> but I think I think the best thing to note is just to the only thing that you can take with you is what you've done positively and what you how you hold yourself accountable, how you conduct yourself and what kind of person you know that you are. So I know who I am and that's all that really matters to me. I, uh, I, also, I also think there's like, there's a blip and I feel, <clears throat> I feel like I also need to comment this along with kind of like backing up, but I feel like a lot of people think that when the episode airs that night and I've told yeah. the girls this, it's almost like they think that was last night. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I had posted in this group and I said, what could Jenna do to um, redeem herself or something like that? Just, just cur out of curiosity. And everyone commented and said, quit or, you know, put, put, um, admit to everything. And I'm thinking, but what did this girl do that was like, so absolutely terrible? I'm very familiar with, with, I love dating narcissistic personalities <laughs> i love anyone who loves the shit out of themselves and in turn treats me like shit i just am like give it to me so i just i don't i'm i'm not I'm a psychologist not i just don't see that so that's okay, what well, i wanted to ask i'm gonna tell that. you one thing because this is a really good <laughs> recommendation i got too it's a uh there's a book called attachment and mm. it's it's about adult attachment and it's based on, you know, some of the attachment issues that you have as a child, but also what you get as an adult. And it's all about relationships and who you pick and why and how these different uh, attachments um, come together who are. Yeah. Do you know who the author is? Um, I could look. Uh, hey, it's okay if you don't have it. No, I, I just. I have a book club, so I was always it's looking for so new records. Good. And my friends recommended it to me because it was like, um, and I know people will want to know what it is. So let me see. It sounds uh, great because, I mean, I finally, you know, I'm, I'm working through that cycle. I don't think my husband's narcissistic. However, I do think he oh, you have a husband. thinks okay. of himself. So. <laughs> yeah, we did the whole kid thing too. So like we're fully well, deep in awesome. it, but, but I do, um, I do try to tell him once in a while that uh you got to kind of think of me once in a while too dude so <laughs> well, that's good okay so it's called attached and it is by amir amir levine amir and, levine. and rachel heller she has a master of arts and he's an md rachel heller and it's the new science of adult attachment and how it can help you find and keep love so it's wow, good for I like it. many people. I like it's just it. About, yeah, understanding those relationship things and uh, you know, even in even in your current relationships. Yeah, I mean it's always great just to remind, you know, the other person that it's pretty cool when they think of you and not just themselves. Yeah, yeah I exactly. recently did the five love languages. I just oh, yeah. have you read that one before? Yeah. Yeah. It's I think like everybody in any relationship should check that one out because it's so true. Good. Like yeah. everybody represents themselves and receives in different ways yeah and then you're kind of like well i'm doing this for him and why is he not receiving it oh because that's <laughs> not how he receives it but i've exactly. actually realized that the issue for me in relationships is that i have all five love languages and i they speak to me equally so i need everything from every person <laughs> <laughs> i need the gifts i need the touch i need the attention <laughs> Just a heads up. I need, <laughs> I need the woman crush Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah. I need everything until your body is dry and you've given it all to me. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Jenna, okay. anything else that you want to add or you feel like you didn't really say that you want to kind of say your, your piece? Speak your no, truth. That, I mean, that was great. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. This was like a fun girl gab. And I would just say, uh, you know, it's hard to say it when people think that I'm a mean person, but I truly hope that everyone can just be kinder to each other and I'll work on it myself as well. So don't worry. It does not go unnoticed on me that I have flaws and I'm working on them. And don't we all, sister? We all, <laughs> no one's perfect. If I had a camera on me, I'd be, well, I do now, but you know. 
but we're only gonna see your claws. Just <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally joking. <laughs> Seriously, if I, if I had a camera on me, I would be so hated by all of the Facebook world. The no, everyone, you guys all look like in good light. I always feel like my lighting is very, uh, <laughs> but I have like, good. I have like 12 sources of light going right now. Yeah, you've got, <laughs> you've got a good warm glow. Over I got there. my like, I got this my little, <laughs> what, my husband calls it the rock, the stone from, uh, uh, what is that parasite movie? Do you watch oh, Parasite? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, like, the stone, stone that he comes home with? Yeah. He, my salt yeah. rock lamp. My husband's That's like, awesome. oh, you pass along a curse? I'm like, no, I'm just trying to be a hippie. That's fine. We live. <laughs> well, Jenna, thank you so much for joining us today. We really thank appreciate you having it. Me. Um, I think we're going to actually have this episode out Monday. Yes. Yeah. So and I will be doing an Instagram live, actually, tonight at 9. And oh. Monday at 10. Cool. So I, don't right. know, we'll I don't know when you want to air it, but that's uh, my game plan. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you actually just opening up yourself and expressing right. yourself to us. So we appreciate it. Thank you so right. much. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah. me. Super fun. Thank you. Talk Bye. to you guys later. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.